Tonight is a special night in our show because all of our audience, veterans and their families, everyone in our audience, and that's because as we have this show closest to Veterans Day, we want to pay tribute to the people whose service and whose sacrifice have gifted us our freedom. We don't have it without them. And it is never lost upon me that if it were not for the folks in uniform, I might not enjoy the extraordinary liberty that is mine as an American. Now, over behind Keith Bilbrey, we want you to see what we've got. It's this beautiful flag. And what you may not be able to see real uh, clearly, there are uh, replica dog tags representing various people of the military who have served our country and whose friends or family have honored them by putting their name on this flag. We keep it here at our show. Uh, Miss Juanette Turner, who is our wonderful audience experience coordinator, has put this together. Now, since we've started the show, we have now over 1,250 of these dog tags representing people in our audience who have come and put the names of a loved one uh, as a, just a reminder of what all of us are uh, grateful for, the service of those in our military. So that wonderful flag, Keith, it's, it's pretty special, and you get to stand over by it tonight, yeah, don't you? Yeah, it's beautiful. And you know, some of these names go all the way back to the Civil War to present day. Some are still living, some have, have gone on, but uh, boy, what a, what a tribute, and she did a great job on it when that did. And, and a great way for us to uh, remember our veterans as we start the show. Well, just when we did not think 2020 could get any more bizarre, we had an election. And more people voted than ever in the history of the country, despite a Chinese virus that was forcing a lockdown for most Americans for most of the year. Well, Joe Biden has been declared the winner of the hard-fought election, so he and Kamala Harris will be headed to the White House in January. But it is reported that he's not going to use the Oval Office because there's this really cool basement at the White House and he feels more at home there, so that's where he'll be working. Now, as we tape our show, we still don't know for certain who won. Will Joe Biden be declared the winner after all the legal battles? Will he be inaugurated in a parking lot with a handful of cars honking at him while he screams into a microphone? Well, half of America is ecstatic, and the other half is heartbroken. I don't think anyone doubts who I supported, but there are a few things that I want to put in perspective. First, we are blessed to live in a country where we, the people, choose our leaders by voting instead of shooting. It's ballots, not bullets, that elevate a person to the White House or to the Senate or the House of Representatives. Many nations have leaders who are installed by a military action in a bloody coup, or they just have leaders who are there because they inherited the job from their daddy. Well, next, regardless of who we voted for, we certainly can celebrate the fact that 160 million people voted. It's the most ever in our history. Hopefully, all of them that were indeed alive at the time of their vote but it really does reveal that as Americans, we did take the election seriously and we didn't sit it out. And when there's a low turnout election, it's always disappointing that people showed no real interest in the direction of their nation. It's the equivalent of saying, ah, whatever you guys wanna do, just fine with me, even if it isn't just fine with you. And the voting was conducted in civility and in an orderly manner. 160 million highly opinionated citizens either stood in lines for sometimes hours and even in bad weather. Others went to the trouble of getting a ballot in the mail and then sending it back, and that is a logistical miracle for that. And in all of this, there was less violence than at an LSU football game. <laughs> You've ever been to one of those. And once we get past our passions and our own partisan political perspectives, we still will live in the greatest country on God's green earth. We really will. Now, of course, at every election, Hollywood celebrities threaten to leave the country if the election doesn't go their way, but they never actually leave. I say that's too bad. 
Because if they're that childish, we probably would be better off without them. And by the way, I've always offered to pay their one-way airfare to wherever they want to go, but they never take me up on it. If they would move, they might realize that we're a pretty amazing country after all. But I still don't want them back if they go. Well, I'd love to win every election that I'm involved with, but I feel I'm already a winner by being an American. We have our ups and downs, our bumps and our bruises, and I'm gonna keep working to make us a more perfect union. But at the end of the day, I'm gonna thank God that of all the places on earth to be born, by His grace, I was born in America. And I'll do all I can to keep it. The land of the free, the home of the brave, and one nation under God. Now, if you want more videos like that one, hit the subscribe button below and the notification bell right next to it. And if you leave a comment, positive or negative, I'll be sure that my dog Toby sees it and responds to you in kind. <laughs>